All right, Patrick, well, time for us to talk about Juno and Jupiter and what's been going on there. Okay, yes. So Juno, which is NASA's mission to study the planet Jupiter, performed its 40th close pass around the giant planet. That closest point to the planet is uh, known as Perijove. This is Perijove number 40, which is indicated where that blue arrow is. At that point, the spacecraft is roughly about 2,000 miles above the cloud tops of Jupiter. Now, normally, when we look at Jupiter through a telescope, we see a banded planet just looking exactly like this. But Juno has a unique view. It actually flies directly over the pole of Jupiter. This is the graphic that shows that. It gives us a view of Jupiter poles, uh, north and south, that we can never see before. This image was taken from the last Perijove in January, number 39, and it shows what it looks like when Juno approaches Jupiter. This is a view that you cannot see from Earth. Here we're looking down at roughly about 16,000 miles above the North Pole of uh, Jupiter. It's very different. It's not banded. It's covered with lots of various circular storms or cyclones. One of the interesting things about Jupiter is that the cyclones near the North Pole of Jupiter, there's eight of them that basically cycle around the North Pole. They're all labeled here. There are five storms that circle around the South Pole. The plus there was a sixth storm that tried to barge into the other five, but later did not make it. So there are currently five storms positioned roughly in a pentagon about 72 degrees apart that are in a very stable configuration around the South Pole. This is just a composite image taken from several perijoves to see these interesting cyclones that, that are very intriguing for the investigators and scientists. Taking a look at some of the other pictures taken on perijove 40, here we see a high latitude image of a folded filamentary region. And you can see it's kind of still bluish in color. And we have to remember that these images are color enhanced so we can see some of the features and also the contrast is boosted. We can see how beautiful these are. The whitish clouds are ammonia ice crystals, which are from pop-up thunderstorms. This image is taken roughly about 2,000 miles, so near the closest point, it's Perijo. We see a circular storm, which looks like the Great Red Spot, but isn't. There are many tiny storms. This one's roughly about the size of Texas swirling around in the middle uh, latitudes of Jupiter. Just close to the equator is a turbulent feature caused by a jet stream just below the more stable equatorial belt of Jupiter. Beautifully color enhanced and you can see all the fine details of the upper level clouds and some of the deeper levels in darkish gray color. A unique picture that we've not seen for a while. This is Jupiter, just looking at the southern hemisphere at a latitude of 55 degrees south, that dark elongated feature right at the top is the shadow cast by Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede, just near the terminator of Jupiter. So Jupiter frequently gets these shadows from moons. Talking about moons, Juno is uh, still proceeding to get closer and closer to the icy moon Europa which is the sixth largest moon in the solar system. At left, that was a picture taken when Juno was just about 51,000 miles away. This time, just last month on PJ40, it took a picture at 29,000 miles and you can see the difference, you can see a little more detail. This is also a unique view. We're looking down at the North Pole of Europa, an area that we've never seen before. This is not the closest it's gonna come, in late September of this year, Juno will swoop just to about 221 miles above Europa's surface, giving us the closest flyby of any spacecraft since 1997, when Galileo flew a little bit closer, 124 miles above the surface of Europa. All wow. of this information will give us some data for upcoming missions, such as the Europa Clipper, which is destined to arrive around about 2030. Yeah, the Europa Clipper mission is really going to be something. Um, Patrick, we had a question in our chat. Uh, folks yes. wanted to know, how long are those uh, polar cyclones? Uh, how long do they last? Do we know? Um, they seem to have been there quite a long time, but do they compare with 
could they last as long as the, the Great Red Spot has lasted? Those polar cyclones have been remarkably stable. Basically, that they can last for a number of years, which is intriguing for, for the scientists. Yeah, very, very cool stuff. Well, thank you for answering that. Uh, I figured you'd have a, a better finger on the pulse of those storms than, than I do.